This episode of Techzilla is sponsored by Domain.com. Brandon posts up on Facebook, I have just recently moved and seen an episode where you talked about QoS. I always have trouble watching a 720p YouTube video. I was wondering if you could tell me how to configure it. P.S. I have a Linksys E4200 V1 router. Joining us, ladies and gentlemen, to discuss quality of service, Mr. Quality of Service himself, Roger Chang, series producer, Techzilla. Worked retail for four years. I know service. We know to some, an extent. Don't forget the lifetime of restaurant experience. Yes. Decades lifetime. between the two of us. About a decade. Okay, so let's talk quality of service. At its core, QoS is about prioritizing your network packets so that the most important packets get first dibs on the limited network or internet bandwidth that is available. There's a first step. <laughs> There's a first step. The number one step you need to find out is if the issue is within your router, your home network, or, or with your ISP. Yeah, or we should say somewhere between the server sending you the video or file and your ISP. So the simplest way to kind of test that out is actually to plug your machine, whether it's a laptop, PC, directly into your DSL right. cable modem and run a speed test. And you know, it's, it's very simple. You go to speedtest.net and uh, actually ran one earlier. And as you can see, I have almost a symmetrical download and upload speed. In fact, the one at home I actually have is uh, rates at 57 megabits per second. And this actually leads to my one, uh, not my one, but my one of many uh, comments about <laughs> this. You need to be careful about what you get from download speeds like mm -hmm. this, because oftentimes when you use a, a consumer level uh, cable modem uh, service, they have what they call boost. And which, what happens is when you start downloading or whatever, it tends to kind of amp it up to make, sh to make give it seem the, like... The first 30 seconds of your download yeah. is super fast and then it tapers down over time, which ironically works really well to make things look really fast on speed test. But Just when it comes to video, not so much. In fact, you can actually use another uh, uh, tool called GlassNOS. Uh, <laughs> and it basically tests to see if your ISP is shaping your traffic. Unfortunately, it will not work uh, on my laptop, but it does work on my PC, so check it out. Um, but definitely, you do want to figure out whether or not it is at your ISP end or at your local uh, uh, network end. Because if it's not at your local network end, it doesn't matter what kind of QoS or fancy router you have, it ain't going to help anything. So seriously, try playing the YouTube 720p video when you're attached to your cable modem, when you're attached to your DSL router. If you can, plug directly in your cable modem or router. If you can't, use a gigabit ethernet connection. Um, but try different services. You know, try Vimeo, try YouTube, try revision3.com. See if it makes a difference. Because sometimes you'll find out, and we had this is a problem we had in some of our previous uh, uh, employment, where for some reason, this video service worked fine, but ours didn't. And we ended up having to do things like change the routing of the packets through the internet to get to different locations. And what's even more confusing is that even within YouTube, you can have different performance levels. For example, very popular music video that's you know being uh, bankrolled by EMI or some like Warner Brothers music label will generally get you very good speeds, but if you try to watch someone else's video of their vacation that's in 720 or 1080p, uh, might not be so great. This would be examples of traffic shaping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, you've tested your video, you can't, you, you're connected directly to your router, um, and you can't play the video. You might want to try a different web browser. Try Firefox, try Chrome, try updating Flash on your computer, try reinstalling a fresh browser, just in case it's something that's screwed up on your machine. Make sure you're not running anything else in the background. Shut everything down except for the one tab on the one browser with that video open and see if that makes a difference. And if you can, maybe, borrow someone else's machine to make sure it's not just your machine. Right. Sometimes, I'm, I've learned this much to my uh, detriment, <laughs> that sometimes one machine can totally throw everything off right. and it was something you installed or something that you broke that is uh, causing a performance issue. Yeah. Now, saying that's all good, you get awesome speed, you can watch you know, Star Wars pirated 1080p video from YouTube on your laptop directly connected. That means it's probably your router. Uh, and with routers, you most, at least most consumer routers right now, support something called QoS, which is quality of service. Now, the thing you want to ensure is that sometimes there are features that are like uh, WMM, which is called Wi-Fi Multimedia Extensions, which in effect allows a wirelessly connected to your router uh, notebook or handheld device to basically get better performance. It's kind of like QoS for Wi-Fi. So you want to make sure that's uh, checked uh, within all your settings, your laptop, your router, your, your application. 
But once you get down to the nitty gritty of the QoS, I'm gonna show you here on our uh, router, the TP-Link. Unfortunately, it has a, a very simple uh, control system, QoS, not a very uh, sophisticated one, but uh, adequately enough to show you. So in this, in this version, it's actually called bandwidth control, and one of the first things you wanna do is to tell the router what your total bandwidth is. Mm -hmm. So this is based on your speed test. Um, and generally, you want to make sure that you do not go over it. This is how it budgets bandwidth. If you give too much, it assumes you have a lot more. It's going to start doing things differently, and you will actually uh, cause uh, performance issues. So in this case, I basically said we have had 20,000 uh, kbps. Now, once that's said, I save it, and I go to a rules list, and now I add my first one, which is the IP of the machine that I want affected. And here, let me see if I can modify this. Uh, you show the IP range. If you want a set of machines or your one machine, I just basically chose this machine. Port range, because YouTube is based off HTTP, it's port 80. And the protocol, even though HTTP is TCP, YouTube is UDP, so I make sure <laughs> that's enabled or you can just do all. Clear as mud. Clear as mud. Egress bandwidth, that means uh, data that's going out, the minimum bandwidth. This is important. This is the threshold which it will not go below. That means QoS will not allow the, the bandwidth to dip below 6,000. And 6,000 about, or 6,000 kpps is about the limit for 720p HD video on YouTube to play uh, uh, comfortably. Right. So if you go below that, that's where you get the stuttering and, and some of the other issues. And max bandwidth, you can put whatever uh, you want. You can set to usually whatever the, the max amount is mm -hmm. on your uh, router. You click save. Now once you do that, you actually want to start adding, and I haven't done this, but you also want to add everything else because you want to set rules for all the other devices that you have on your network. And then that's where you want to start limiting. So for example, bandwidth, if it's something like uh, 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 an FTP server that I don't need running all the time, I can probably set this down to 10 because it's not a big issue. Uh, <laughs> even if it trickles in, because I want to watch my YouTube videos. And you know, the max bandwidth, I make sure I'll blunt it, so I'll leave it at 5,000. So even though someone's FTPing to my server right. on my home network, it's not going to interrupt my YouTube video watching for some reason. I, uh, I think 10 might be a little bit low on the threshold there, but that's just me. <laughs> well, you know, it, but see, th this is kind of the thing. It depends on your personal right. setup. Some people, this isn't an issue. They're just getting people's homework right. as a text file, so you don't really need a large bandwidth. Point taken. Um, and you want to kind of do this for each uh, case that you have in your network. Now, the thing is, you want to test this uh, incrementally because sometimes any kind of changes that you make uh, might throw something off. Right. So you want to kind of do it 10% increments. So you kind of keep raising up that threshold until you find a happy medium where everything seems to work. It also occurs to me there's probably one other thing you should do before you start tweaking your QoS settings. If it's a laptop that has the problem playing a video, start with the laptop like next to the router. Once you, once you, verify, that, once you verify that everything plays OK when you're connected directly to the router or directly to your modem, uh, if you want to do it wirelessly, start by making sure the wireless is actually decent going to whatever bedroom or kitchen or closet or bathroom you're using the laptop in. Because it would be bad to spend hours configuring QoS to find out you have the same problem because you have crappy network coverage in some part of your house. And you know, ideally, if your notebook allows it, test it with a wired connection first. Mm -hmm. And to make sure that it is, your, again, your network and not something with Wi-Fi. Again, right. you know, it, there are a multitude of issues why your YouTube uh, HD playback might be crappy, and it might not be your network, and it may be your network, but it might be the one machine on your network and not your entire network. Um, and I would also say when you do any of this, make sure everything else is unplugged. Have that one machine only right. on the router until you got it worked out. Uh, that way you can, as you slowly, again, add the different devices back on, right. you can troubleshoot and make sure that they aren't interfering. Thank you, Mr. Chang. Ladies and gentlemen, more Techzilla coming right up. But before that, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. Entrepreneurs and innovators are all turning ideas into realities online backed by the strength of a .NET domain name. .NET is one of the world's most popular domain extensions, and a .NET domain name from Domain.com will inject your business with instant credibility. Already have a .com? Purchase the corresponding .NET from Domain.com and protect your online brand. Is the .com you want already taken? The .NET is a perfect alternative. We like Domain.com because they're affordable, .NET addresses are only $8.99 a year, they're also reliable and easy to use. The folks at Domain.com want to hook up our fans with an awesome offer. Get 20% off their already affordable domain names and web hosting when you use the coupon code TECHZILLA at Domain.com's checkout. 
That's 20% and big time savings. Don't forget to use the coupon code TECHZILLA. And when you think domain names, think domain.com.